Today, inshallah, I just want to take a, a very important uh, lesson from the, from the life of Musa alayhi salam and from the story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending him as a prophet uh, to Fir'aun. And there's a very important lesson to be learned in, in this. First of all is that many times in life, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us, puts us in a situation, if the situation is easy for us, think about this, how many times we've come across difficulties or what people may perceive as, as difficulties. And you look at the situation, you say, you know what, this is easy for me, alhamdulillah. I can easily crush this, I'll get through it. And you get through it, alhamdulillah, very easily. The problem is, when there are situations that come upon us in life, that we don't know what to do in those kind of situations. That is where we, you know, we usually become cold feeded. We usually don't know what to do. And that is where we become very worried. How will this impact my life? How will this situation affect my family? How will it affect my finances? How will it affect my comfort of life? So the question is that what do you do in that kind of situation? What do you do when you are in self-doubt? What do you do when you're in a situation when you doubt your own abilities? And that is what we learn from the story of Musa alayhi salam. So you have to understand that Musa alayhi salam is just traveling one day with his wife. And as the Quran mentions that, you know, uh, when they were traveling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the plural uh, verb, which means that it was him, his wife, and some of the ulama has speculated that at that time Musa alayhi salam was expecting uh, their child. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam tells his family, stay here, I'm going to go and bring some fire, bring, bring some fire, bring some water and so forth. And in the middle of all that, now Musa alayhi salam is enjoying his life. He's with his in-laws, he's spending his life, he has job security, he has a house to live in. Everything is going perfectly normal. And all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa, your days of comfort are over. Now you have a very big task ahead of you. And this task was not a, a small task. It was a great task. It was a very uncomfortable task. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa alayhi salam, I want you to go back. Ila innahu taga. Go back to Fir'aun. Now the reason why this is difficult is, why? Because number one, where did Musa alayhi salam grow up? In whose house did he grow up? In Fir'aun's house. And usually, you're okay if you have to, if you want to go back to someone that who does not know you, you know, you have a fresh new start. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, go back to the person who raised you. Go back to the person in whose house you were raised and he knows you. He knows your personality. He knows your demeanor. He knows your temperament. So go back to that person. Not only that, but now Musa alayhi salam also understands that if I'm going to go back, I'm going back with a crime on my, on my shoulders. Because 10 years ago, he fled from, from Egypt and he went to Madian. And it's not like Fir'aun has forgotten. Because when he went back to Fir'aun, what did Fir'aun say? You know, with so much sarcasm. Didn't you do something, you know, Musa? I know what you did. You know, I know what, what you did to that person. No one else may remember here, but I remember what you did. Now you're trying to come and giving us a lecture. You're trying to come and try to be this big righteous person. I know your crimes. I know your weaknesses. You know, people, they use weaknesses to, to gain dominance over someone else. So here, so Musa alayhi salam remembers all this. And not only that, Musa alayhi, has, Musa alayhi salam has a speech impediment. Not only that, but his own qawm, his own nation, are enslaved by Fir'aun. So now Musa alayhi salam is going against all these obstacles. You have to understand this. And not only that, but he's expressing these obstacles too. He says, Ya Rabbi, inni akhafu an yukadhibun. I fear that he's gonna, he's gonna um, completely deny whatever I call him towards. Wa yadiqu sadri. My, heart, my chest is tightened, meaning that I'm feel, feeling very uncomfortable in going into this kind of situation. And my, my tongue cannot utter the proper speech in order to bring him close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, but then he says, he, there, was a, 
do you remember, oh Allah, that there was a warrant of arrest out for me? That's why I left Egypt. Like, did you forget all this? That like, this is my situation? So what do we do in that kind of situation? Because once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya Musa, I remember all these kind of things. You still go back to this person. So the question is, that what do we do when we are in a situation like this? How many times we are put in situations in life, we don't want to be. You know, life is going on very well. But then all of a sudden there's an obstacle that comes in our life. There's a situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in. So the question is that what do we do and how do we handle these kind of situations? The first thing is that you always accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the very first thing. Right now in Salat al-Fajr, I recited a verse. I, uh, in the second raka'ah, I recited verses from Surah al-Insan. In that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Inna nahnu nazzalna. We have revealed the Quran upon you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he says, Jalla wa ala, Fasbil li hukmi rabbik. Be patient on the hukum of Allah. What does that mean, the hukum of Allah? The qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, Wala tuti' Do not obey, do not listen, do not follow. Who? Athiman aw kafura. The person who is a sinner. And number two is aw kafura. The person who is ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Usually those who are not okay, those who are complaining about their qadr, they always are taking advices from those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially the, mo the one who is the most ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan. Because shaitan, that is when shaitan comes, right? That you read Quran, you read Salat, you do so much for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do so much for Islam, you are so righteous, you are so pious, your family is pious and so forth, and yet you are in these kind of difficulties, difficulty after difficulty. But remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa there was no one who was more righteous than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet how many difficulties did he have to go through in his life? So this is not a sign, by the way, I've talked about this before, Having challenges in our life is not necessarily a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with us. It could also mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with us, but it does not necessarily mean that only and only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is upset with us. So Allah says in the Quran, Fasbil li hukmi rabbik, be patient with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while you're going through that difficulty, do not fill your ears with the speech and the talk of those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the very first thing is, we have to be content with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is, do not overlook, I mean, look, I mean, of course the ob obstacles are there ahead of you, but accept them and learn how to move on. Why? Because every single challenge, of, of course, every single good comes with some challenges. There are some challenges, and then there are some good times. There is never a situation where a person says, I want to be in a, in a good situation, and he does not have to go through difficulties. When we talk about Jannah, does Jannah, is Jannah just given to us? No, we have to work for our Jannah. When you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, there was a time when then, you know, full, many folds were coming to Islam, and entire tribes were coming to Islam. But did this happen on day one of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, you have to go through difficulties in life. You have have to go through challenges in life in order to see the good days. So if you want to, do not overlook, uh, overlook the obstacles ahead, but accept them and learn how to move forward with them. And of course, this is where the third thing is, we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where Musa alayhi salam, he did exactly that. What dua did he make? The very well-known dua, what dua did he make? This is a him making dua. And by the way, this is a dua you can recite in any kind of situation when you feel uncomfortable. Even like before you give a presentation, before you're about to speak, and before someone, sometimes there's a, a very high ranking position or person of, a person of a, a position and you feel, you know, you feel very uncomfortable, you're not ready to speak in front of that kind of person. If there's ever a situation when you are in this, you can recite this dua at any time, but the point is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the third thing that we should always do. The fourth thing, final thing that we should do is that always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for support or always try to look for some kind of support. When we talk about Musa alayhi salam, what kind of support did he ask for? 
He asked for his brother Harun. Haruna Akhi Ushdud Bihi Asri Wa Ashrikhu Fi Amri. That ask oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send Harun with me. And subhanAllah, Harun alayhi salam was there step by step with uh, Musa alayhi salam and so forth. Not only that, but in life we cannot get through challenges if we're all alone by ourselves. Once again, in the, uh, in the verse from Surah Al Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us do not be with those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, when there are challenges in life, it is always good to have people by your side. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always had the Sahaba by his side. When you study Ashabul Kahf, it was not only one teenager, it was not only one youth who was actually there just protecting his iman. There was an entire group of youth and an entire group of teenagers. When you are around others who are in the same dilemma as yours, in the same challenge as yours, it becomes a little more easier to get through that challenge. It becomes a little more easier to get through that challenge. It's a well-known fact of life. So that is why we always try to look for support within our own community, within our own family. So once again, these are four things that whenever we find ourselves in a difficult situation, in an uncomfortable situation, when there is self-doubt, once again, we do these four things. Number one was what again? Being content with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is learning how to accept that these are the obstacles and learning how to uh, get through them in every single situation. And of course, at that time, you are, you're not ignoring the obstacles, but you are determined that you will get through them, inshallah. Number three is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four is that finding support within your own community or within your own family. And inshallah, with these four things, we will be able to get through any kind of difficulty in life, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength in this dunya and the akhirah. Amin rabbal alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا